Okay, so this is now the next in the lecture series uh, of videos. Basically what we've done so far is we outlined the structures which are responsible for transmitting and distributing the autonomic nervous system in the head and neck. So we did our structures, then we layered it on top, talking about three, five, seven and nine, which are the cranial nerves which are responsible for carrying and distributing this auto autonomic parasympathetic part of the um, nervous system around the head and neck. Um, I then went on to, no, that was talking about anatomic divisions and the anatomic divisions I concentrated on were the ones where the parasympathetic is going to be involved with. I then went on to outline the different ganglion and we have ciliary ganglion, pterygopalatine ganglion, submandibular ganglion and otic ganglion. Now, I'm going to do the sympathetic. So here we go, sympathetic, and you remember the story is catching the intercity train up to the north of Scotland. So what do you do? You can only go so far. Hold on, just get another. Okay, so you can only go so far on the intercity train, and then you get to a stop. This highest level here in orange, this is the superior cervical ganglion. After that, you have to become a little bit more innovative in the methods of transportation that you decide to use. Okay? So you need to decide where you're going. Once you've worked out where you're going, then you need to work out what blood vessels. So it involves quite a lot of route planning. So your sympathetic nervous system, because it can't reach very high up and it can't reach very far down, it has to really plan its route really well. So what it does is it comes off the superior cervical ganglion, which is the ganglion for the sympathetic nervous system, which is the highest in the neck. And that's going to jump off and follow your internal carotid artery. And it's going to encompass your internal carotid artery, almost like a climbing tree plant. Okay? It's going to come to the end. When it gets to the end, it's going to jump off. Okay. As it jumps off, it comes to this bit here where it splits into two. Now the bottom one is going to come down. It's going to go through the superior orbital fissure. It's going to climb into the, through the, the, um, the tendon string. And then it's going to make its way into the ganglion, ciliary ganglion. Right. No synapse, straight through onto the short ciliary nerve, into the back of the eye. That's the first one. Coming back here, the other branch is going to go up. It's going to take on the superior, superior branch of ocular motor, and it's going to follow that. It's going to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going keep going, and right at the end it's going to jump off and attach onto Muller's muscle. Remember, this one is a bit of, it's like Tesco, every little helps, this one's going to pull gently on the upper lid, um, aiding LPS in its function. Okay, and then the last one from here is going to be coming down here, and then at the point where it meets the V1, it's going to take off and then follow V1 up, 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 and then it's going to continue going straight on, straight on, on the long ciliary nerve, again into the back of the eye. Okay, so that's the three branches there. Remember, we also have sympathetics which continue up the carotid, okay, remember this carotid is not cut and bleeding into the Cavernous sinus. I've just done. I've just transected this here just to show you the structures passing through the cavernous sinus. But that sympathetic chain will be continuing up, and then part of it will go up into circle of Willis and go to other parts where it needs to control things like vasomotor tone, especially. And the other part will go along ophthalmic artery heading forwards, and then lacrimal artery gets the lacrimal artery, what it's going to do, it's going to come down, and it's going to work its way through 
following lacrimal nerve, which is part of V1, it's going to follow that to the lacrimal gland. To the lacrimal gland. And that will be mainly to cut off the blood flow supply to that area so that you don't produce as much tears. Okay, so remember sympathetic in the head and neck is mainly for controlling vasomotor tone. So it's how much you squish off and cut off a blood vessel. That's sympathetic. Okay, now, where else do we have sympathetic? Well, there are a few more ganglion which we need to cover. So without further ado, there's this one here, which is the otic ganglion. It will have come up, the sympathetic nervous system will have come up a nearby, a nearby vessel. So this is the middle meningeal artery. The sympathetic nervous system will have come up like that. And it jumped off. And jumped on. So it jumped off and it will latch itself onto this um, auric auricular temporal nerve down into, into the otic ganglion and away. Okay, the next one is the sublingual ganglion. Sublingual ganglion again, local nerve, facial nerve, facial nerve comes, jumps in and away it goes in two separate divisions, one down to the submail mandibular gland and the other one to the sublingual gland. Okay, then this is a submandibular ganglion. Okay, submandibular ganglion we've done, otic ganglion we've done. Um, the only the other ganglion we've done is ciliary ganglion for sympathetic, but we haven't done the pterygopalatine ganglion. So how does that work? Well, that's pretty much simple and straightforward because what happens here is internal carotid will have been climbed all over by the sympathetic here. The sympathetic then kindly donates a branch which goes here, which becomes the deep petrosal, deep petrosal nerve. And that's going to enter the pterygoid canal where it's alongside this nerve, which is the great petrosal nerve. And that's going to keep going forwards, 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 